sound. You hear it everywhere, but do you know how it actually works? Acoustics is the science of sound, and at Maxon, we take acoustics very seriously when developing our products. Because the science of sound matters, we've created a series of short videos to help you understand acoustics, sound transmission, and sound control. Let's get started with some acoustic basics. Sound travels in waves, similar to ripples in water. When these waves reach our ears, a signal is sent to our brain that's processed and then perceived as sound. We perceive sound in two ways, level and frequency. Sound level, or how loud a sound is, is commonly measured in decibels, ranging from zero to 140 decibels. The decibel calculation includes a ratio of intensity to the threshold of hearing. Imagine the annoying buzz of an insect. That's 10 dB. Or the thundering roar of a jet engine at takeoff. That's a painful 140 dB. We start to notice a difference in sound levels when it's changed by 2 to 3 dB. With a 10 dB addition, a sound level is doubled. Subtract 10 dB and the sound level is cut in half. Let's hear an example. When we increase the sound of this violin playing by 10 dB, it sounds twice as loud. But when we double the intensity with two violins playing at the same time, the loudness is only increased 3 dB. The second way we perceive sound is based on frequency, how high or low they are in pitch. This is measured in hertz. Humans can hear sound ranging from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz, although most of us lose the highest frequencies in adulthood. And dogs? Some can hear sounds as high as 65,000 hertz. A low machine hum is 150 hertz. My voice is 250 to 500 hertz. And a bird song can be over 5,000 hertz. As we shift our attention to sound in buildings, it's typically talked about in three ways. Room acoustics, or how sound behaves in rooms. Noise control, or keeping building systems quiet and sound transmission, or blocking unwanted sound. For architectural acoustics, it's important to keep in mind the acoustic scale. That's the range of wavelengths of each frequency. The highest frequencies we can hear have wavelengths that are less than an inch, while the lowest frequencies have wavelengths of over 30 feet long. Picture the length of a school bus or the height of a three-story building, since sound waves are omnidirectional. Longer wavelengths make it harder to control low-frequency sounds. That's because a low-frequency sound won't be blocked by a thin, lightweight material, something that might easily block high-frequency sounds. Consider how voices are muffled when heard through a wall. You probably can't understand the conversation because the high frequency sound of consonants are blocked, but the droning of voices is still audible. In buildings, knowing how to control low frequency sounds can make a big difference in resident and tenant satisfaction. So, with the basic understanding of sound levels, sound frequency, and sound wavelengths. We hope you'll join us for our next videos on sound transmission and how to control sound transmission through construction.